When it comes to setting boundaries, it's important to know that there are different types of boundaries. I'm going to cover today four different types and take what you like, leave the rest. There are other types of boundaries out there. Maybe you've heard of other types of boundaries, but today the four types we're going to talk about are physical boundaries, emotional boundaries, time boundaries, and digital boundaries. Now, maybe you started your mental health journey and that's why you're finding information like this and you're saying to yourself, okay, I get the premise of setting boundaries. I get that I set boundaries to change my own behaviors and that I am not in charge of or in control of changing other people's situations or changing their behavior, right? But I'm in, I'm in control of myself. And maybe you have that basis and and uh, now you're moving into different places and areas in your life that you want to start setting some boundaries for yourself. A good place to start is physical boundaries. And when we start talking about physical boundaries in therapy, we're talking about your comfort levels with physical touch. That could be sexual, that could be friendly touch, that could be handshakes, hugs, walking in vicinity close to people, being in social settings. We, we want to start to understand what we're comfortable with and what we're not comfortable with so that we can eventually communicate it, but most importantly, so that we can protect ourselves and also so that we can operate in social settings without being awkward or uncomfortable or in distress, All right? So physical boundaries are extremely important. And I always share from personal experience, it's like I, I'm a pretty outgoing guy. All right, but I'm also six foot five. So when I'm out in society and groups with people, I have to be very aware of my physical presence in that room, whether it's around females or other men. I have to be aware of how other people might perceive me, and I also have to be aware of what I'm comfortable with. So, you know, pretty much since my teenage years, when I hit my growth spurt and, and popped up to six foot five, you know, people, you know, were they treated me like an adult, you know? And so, you know, when I'd be out and about, um, you know, people were roughhousing, it was never really thought as to whether or not, uh, they should take it easier on me. But I'll be honest with you. I don't like when people get rough with me. It's not, it's not something I enjoy, you know, every once in a while, maybe with friends, like, you know, you put a buddy in a headlock or something like that, but I'm very mild mannered when it comes to those things. And so, you know, when, when people do that kind of stuff or a little bit rough, you know, I think there's an assumption that, oh, I'm six foot five, I'm a big dude, they can get away with that. And what I've learned over the years, and I share this example because um, <clears throat> what I've learned over the years is that people will respect your boundaries if you communicate them right? Especially the people that, you know, when we start associating with people that we respect and respect us, of course, they're going to. So if somebody was a little bit too rough, right, or, you know, uh, in my younger years, when we would go out to, as a group of friends, um, I would just tell them, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I'm not going to partake, right? I'm not going to enjoy that. I'm not going to have fun getting into little physical bouts with you. I'm, I'm just going to stay out of it. And what I found is that those who did enjoy it, they'd get into it and I didn't have to. I give that example because I don't imagine very many people like physical confrontation or, you know, physical aggression. And so that's a very common place to start to communicate. You know, if you have people in your life who are, who violate those boundaries or at the very least push on those lines, it's like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'd really like to spend time with you, but if you're going to do those things, I'm not going to be around. Right. And I had to learn that with people that I really, really care about. You know, I've, I, I've had to communicate that to people where I really enjoyed spending time with them, but they, they just wouldn't stop. And so I, I don't spend time with those people anymore. And as much as that sucks that you may change friend groups, you may change situations with people, the change will be more in line with what you want and what you're comfortable with. And so physical boundaries are extremely important. <clears throat> I, I think it's a really good place to start too, because people aren't going to know what you're comfortable with and uncomfortable with. You know, when I'm talking with a client in my clinical practice about their physical boundaries, let's say in a relationship, and it, it pertains to intimacy, physical intimacy, right, which is a completely different topic we can talk about later. We'll just use the word intimacy here. Um, 
it's really important to tell your partner what you're into. Because if they start doing something you don't like and you don't communicate it, how do they know next time not to do those things? And so if, if you're in a relationship, communicate what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with physically so that your partner gets, one, gets to know you, but also isn't harming you or isn't putting you in uncomfortable situations and vice versa. Now, if you're with somebody, and, and I'll put this as a disclaimer, if you're with somebody who either gets uncomfortable talking about those things or uh, isn't willing to respect when you communicate those things, then I would seriously take a look at um, what distance you need from that relationship or at the very least, like taking a break from anything physical with that person until they can communicate with you because the communication of boundaries is extremely important before you get into anything physical <clears throat> on any plane so that there's a level of respect, right? That's um, both in, um, you know, if we look at like physical combat sports, there's a set of rules and guidelines that people have to follow. And the same is true, funny enough, in the bedroom, there's a set of rules and guidelines that we need to follow out of respect. And we need to know both what we're comfortable with and what our partner is comfortable with. And so physical boundaries are extremely important and they should be communicated early and often. You know, a, a last example on physical boundaries, I'm a hugger. I enjoy hugs. I think they're therapeutic, but I don't walk around and hug everybody. I have a, I have a bubble of physical space that I enjoy. And if I invite you into that, it's probably because we're pretty close and I'm used to being in that physical proximity with you. But if not, I'm probably not inviting you in and a handshake will suffice. But I don't just go around and assume that everybody knows that about me. So if I'm in a social setting, I'll communicate. If somebody asks me, do you want a hug? You know, sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no. And I'm allowed to fluctuate in that the same way you are. And sometimes it's, hey, I'd rather just have a handshake, right? And we're all afforded that dignity, right? The dignity to make our own choices. And that's extremely important in our physical boundaries. <clears throat> the next is our emotional boundaries, right? So no one can make you feel anything is, is the first point that I want to raise. And, and I share this all the time with my clients when, well, she did this and, it, and she made me feel this way, or he made me feel this way. It's impossible. No one can make you feel anything. People can behave. And as a result of those behaviors, you can choose to feel a certain kind of way. And it's up to you to hold your boundaries and contain those in a way that you can cope with them so that you can continue engaging in that relationship or in that connection with the person. Your emotions are your responsibility. Now, you may not always be able to control what emotion comes up when people behave in certain ways, but you can control how you choose to react. And so a common one, right, to think or a common way to think about it is I'm not responsible for my first thought, but I am responsible for my second thought, right, after a situation has occurred. And I'm certainly responsible for the way that I respond, the way that I behave, the way that I react. I am responsible for those things. And our emotional boundaries are, hey, I may feel this way about this situation but here's how I'm going to choose to think about it. Here's how I'm going to choose to respond to it. Here's how I'm going to choose to act on it. Right? So let's say somebody says something that hurts your feelings. All right. It's okay to have your feelings hurt, right? It's normal. We all feel upset when people say hurtful things. It's a, a very normal part of human behavior and the way that we operate. Well, it's almost biological. We're going to feel some kind of way when somebody says something hurtful to us. Now, an emotional boundary would be checking in and taking a moment for yourself to understand what it is that you feel before you choose to respond. A lack of emotional boundaries would be they said something hurtful and I said something hurtful back. Right? That would be a lack of emotional boundaries. An example of an emotional boundary is somebody said something hurtful to me. I don't take it personally. I either choose to walk away and turn the other cheek, or I choose to communicate directly with that person that it's hurtful and I'm, I'm not a fan of it and I'm not going to be putting, it up, putting up with that from them any further. Right? And the closer the relationship is, the more I would say it's important to communicate directly. Now, you may need time 
to do that. You may need some space, which is also another aspect of emotional boundaries. You may need time to figure out exactly how you're feeling. You may need time to formulate what you want to say, right? And it's important to have that time, right? So it brings us to our third type of boundary, which is time boundaries. Time boundaries are, you know, can range anywhere from how much time am I going to spend on a holiday trip, right, with my loved ones, all the way to how much time do I need space from somebody that I'm in a relationship with to get a better understanding of how I'm feeling in this situation, to how much time am I going to engage in my hobby this week, to how much overtime am I going to work in my profession this week. So there's a lot of different types of time boundaries. Some of my favorite, right, that come up a lot um, is around the holidays. And I deal with some individuals who have some pretty tricky family dynamics, wonderful people, but families are tricky. And a lot of families have issues, right? And I'm sure listening, you may be able to pinpoint some of the situations in your own family around the holidays that are just hard. And when it comes up, I communicate with my clientele, like, how long are you going to spend on this trip? Well, I hadn't really thought about it. Okay, well, it's important probably to define, you know, are you going to be there for five days? Or are you going to be there for two? Is two days too long? Is five days too long? Is two days not long enough? Is five days not long enough? It's really important to determine how long am I going to spend with these people? You know, because then you can start to come to a place of like, not only how long am I spending there, but do I take Uh, my own car? Do I get a rental car? Do I stay at a hotel? All of these things are really important around those types of situations, different types of boundaries. But if you can determine at a base, like, okay, here's how long I'm going to stay. Then we can boil it down. Okay. You're staying in a hotel. How long do you stay in the environment? Like, let's say you're staying in a hotel and the family is having dinner, right? Um, and get togethers at mom and dad's house. How long do you stay in that environment before you leave? You know, I know for me, I love my family, but I know for me, I've got a couple hours in those settings before I start to get, you know, burnt out and I need space. We're all adults, we need space. So when I go to a family function for a holiday, I'm there for a couple hours and then I go wherever I'm staying. And I've shared this with clients and and when they do it, they have much better outcomes, right? And I'm not saying that everybody's time frames are the same, but when you define that for yourself of like, well, I know when I'm there for about six hours, Uncle Jimmy John starts drinking too much and then he gets belligerent and in the past I've stayed and that's really uncomfortable. But this year I decided I'm going to leave when that six hour mark hits. I felt so much better about it. I can't tell you how many times. I've heard that work. And so time boundaries are extremely important because it it starts to help us wrap our mind around what we're going to do to protect ourselves. And if you remember from some of my other videos, and even in this one, we're talking about protecting ourselves. And that's, that's what boundaries are for. So if we start to set boundaries of what we're going to do in certain situations, and how long we're going to put up with certain situations, you will start to create a solution for how you're going to take care of yourself. Right? So lots of different types of time boundaries, but how much time we we spend with other people is the most common in relationships. The second most common time boundary is how long do I need space from someone? So I always share in a relationship, if you're in an argument or you're having a fight or a tiff has come up in the relationship and you need space, you need to communicate how long you need space in that relationship and you need to come back to the conversation at the time you've stated. So if you're having a hard time, you say, I need 20 minutes to cool off. You, you better be back in 20 minutes to finish that conversation. Because if you don't, the person on the other end of it, you run the risk of them feeling abandoned if you don't communicate that time. So here's how long I need and then come back at that time. So it doesn't matter if it's five minutes or 24 hours. If you've said 24 hours, you take your space, you come back at that 24 hour mark to continue the conversation. And you do that for yourself as well to be consistent, right? To communicate consistently, to communicate clearly. Here's how much time I took that time. I'm back at that time. And those are kind of the two in relationships, most common time boundaries that are helpful and, and that 
often you'll see get set and that people oftentimes need help with. So I would encourage you to utilize those because they're extremely helpful. And the last one is kind of a product of the times, but I see this one a lot in my clinical practice, and that's digital boundaries. It is imperative that you set a time frame of how long you're going to engage with your digital apparatus, you know, your phone, your cameras, your computers, your television. It's, it's extremely important. You know, I always tell people too, it's like, I don't watch the news. Right. I've set a boundary for myself that I don't watch the news. Um, and a reason I do that is because, well, the news makes people really anxious. And I know it made me really anxious. And when I stopped watching it, I didn't feel anxious anymore. Then that started to uh, venture over into way less social media time and, and eventually a lot less time on the technology. And it worked wonders for me. Now, I'm not telling you you have to do any of those things, but if you're anxious watching some of those things, that's an option. And this is a digital boundary that you could hold for yourself. Cut down on TV time, cut down on social media time, cut down on the amount of time that you have a screen in front of your face and you'll feel a whole lot better. All right. Now, that's subjective, right? Maybe you feel just fine with all of those things, but you recognize I spend an awful lot of time on my digital devices. Well, communicate with yourself, check in with yourself. How much time should I be spending on my phone? You know, if, if you get off work at five o'clock and you're on your phone until you fall asleep at 10 o'clock, okay, well that's five hours. Is five hours too much time to be on your phone? Probably. Do you want to cut that down? Well, you better have a conversation with yourself about it and hold that boundary, right? You can change that behavior. And I, I know that people watching this know that and probably watching it on a device right now because that's how this works. And so communicate with yourself, ask yourself the difficult questions. How much time should I spend on my digital devices? Have I even thought about it? You know, if I think about it, am I spending too much time and do I need to cut it out? And, and that could only be helpful, right? Even if you want to spend five hours on your phone, just communicate with yourself about it. Set a parameter. Okay. It's five hours total right? And maybe throughout the rest of your day, you're doing work and you're hanging out with family and friends. But it's really important from this aspect of like, the reason we set digital boundaries and talk about it in a clinical practice is because when you spend too much time on your digital devices, you're not prioritizing peace and quiet. You're not prioritizing in person physical connections with other people. You're probably not engaging in too many other things when you're engaging with your digital devices. And so all these aspects that are crucial for healthy relationships that are crucial for your mental health are being sacrificed for mindless entertainment, right? And mindless entertainment is great. I love a good cat meme. I like those little videos. I like, you know, when people send me that kind of stuff and I get a kick out of it, right? But the reality is it, it's not more important to me than let's say my family that lives in the city that I want to see or, or my friends that I see a couple nights a week or the board game nights that I have with friends. All of those are infinitely more important than the time I spend on my digital devices. So I have a conversation with myself of, I'm not going to spend more time on this digital device than I need. So covered a lot of different types of boundaries. And again, like I said in the beginning, there's a ton of different types. Take what you like and leave the rest. I hope this was helpful. If you like videos like this, tune in. Breaking the Cycle podcast. We're on Spotify as well as YouTube here. We have a show Friday nights that goes live. The information is in the description if you ever wanted to call in and ask more questions about these topics. I love you. I'll see you in the next one.